Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are talking about DaVinci Resolve for color grading. Now, some of you may have heard of DaVinci Resolve before. I've mentioned it in previous videos. Some of you may have no idea what it is. So what is DaVinci Resolve? Well, it's an amazing software that was originally developed for color correction. And then over the years and over the different iterations of the program, it's kind of evolved into a more powerful, all-inclusive editing system and color correction system all in one. And the best part about DaVinci Resolve, drum roll, it is free to download. I know you guys like free. The last couple of videos I've been asking you to pay, but it's free, all right? In the link in the video description below, you, yes, you can download DaVinci Resolve 16 for free. So click the link in the video description below and it's yours, no money. Now, a lot of people I've talked to recently have been switching over to DaVinci Resolve from Adobe Premiere and making that their primary editing system. And while I, you know, I applaud their effort, I don't think I'm there yet. I like Premiere, I like After Effects, I like Photoshop and the dynamic link and everything that's involved with Adobe. Adobe for editing, but I totally and 100% am on board with using DaVinci Resolve for color correction because it is light years, light years ahead of Lumetri Color, which is absolute f***ing dog shit. And you know that I'm being serious about it because I never swear on this channel and Lumetri Color is f***ing dog shit. But all that aside, today is going to be a crash course in color correction in DaVinci Resolve 16. I'm gonna show you guys how to get a ProRes export out of Premiere into DaVinci and start color grading today. If you've never used it before, maybe you're on the fence, you're a little bit afraid of DaVinci. Hopefully after today, you're gonna be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more willing to experiment with it because it it really is an incredible software for color grading. I'm not there on the editing yet, but maybe in the future, not today. So go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve from the link in the video description below. We're gonna start off in Premiere just really quickly, exporting some stuff out and then getting right into the color correction. I hope you guys are ready. I'm really excited about it. Let's get to it. All right, guys, down here on my timeline, I've got a couple of clips that were shot at my wedding of me getting ready before the ceremony and a nice little time lapse of some clouds. So once you guys have made an edit for yourself in Adobe Premiere, how we're gonna get it out of Premiere and into DaVinci is very simple. We're gonna first start off by hitting Control M on your keyboard to open up the export settings. We're gonna navigate right up here to format, make sure it is set to QuickTime format. And under preset, we are going to select Apple ProRes 4444. And if you guys don't have this preset, you may wanna update Premiere and get the newest version so that you will have this available to you. And then right down here under our video settings, we're gonna make sure that we render at maximum depth. We are going to use maximum render quality and we are going to switch the depth from eight bits per channel to 16 bits per channel. Then we are going to go to the output name, navigate to where we want this to be saved. I'm gonna call it wedding clips, hit save, and now we export. All right, and once it's done exporting, you're just gonna save and quit out of Premiere because we no longer need to be in this program. Now, you guys are gonna wanna download and install DaVinci Resolve, and once you've done that, you can just open it up on your computer. And if you are opening it for the first time, you will need to follow the on-screen instructions to set up DaVinci Resolve, where your media is gonna be stored, all that fun stuff. It'll walk you through, it's super easy. Do that, and then once you're done, you'll get a screen that looks like this. So all you gotta do is come down here to the new project window, and we are going to make a new project called Wedding Clips and I'm going to click Create, and it will open up DaVinci Resolve. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh my God, there's so many buttons. There's so many menu items. This looks terribly confusing. Ian, I'm terrified. Don't be terrified. We're gonna take it step by step. It's gonna be a really nice bonding experience for the both of us. Let's start off on the far left-hand side down here with the Media tab. We're gonna go ahead and click on Media, and then you are going to navigate to where we just saved that file out of Premiere. Here it is, Wedding Clips. And what I want you guys to do is right-click on it and go to Scene Cut Detection which will open up a new window in DaVinci Resolve and then come right down here to Auto Scene Detect. And what that will do is it will actually scrub through your export and make an edit where you've already made an edit in Premiere. And it is about 99% perfect. So once you've gone through and it's done its thing, go to Add Cuts to Media Pool. It's gonna ask you to change your project settings based on your export settings from Premiere. You're gonna to wanna to hit change so you're working in the same format. Then come up here and click this exit. And now all of your clips have been put into your media bin from your master export. And some people may talk about XML workflows out of Premiere and like getting it into, it's very confusing. And what I like to do is edit in Premiere where I know how to edit and I have the tools available to me that I'm used to, edit the whole thing, export in a ProRes format, then import into DaVinci so then I can just do my color grade and not have to deal with the DaVinci editing side of things. Although I've heard it's good, I'm still not there yet. Let's keep going. 
So once your clip has been cut, what you're gonna do is hit Control A on the keyboard to select all, right click on any clip and come up to create new timeline using selected clips. And we're gonna call this malware bytes. Get out of here. We're gonna call this wedding grade and we're going to click create and then it will create a new timeline which you can double click. And now here we are kind of used to seeing kind of similar things to what we're used to seeing in Premiere. You can take these clips, you can move them around, you can edit in here, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna color grade. But I am showing you here that it got all of these scene cut detection edits absolutely perfectly. And if you guys are using a cross dissolve in Premiere like I was on this last clip, sometimes over a cross dissolve, it will chop it up into little bits down here. So what you can do to correct that is just highlight these guys, right click, new compound clip, and it will create one solid clip. And we are ready to go to the color tab. Now, in the color tab, this is what it looks like. There's a lot going on here, let me explain. Over here in the top left-hand corner is the gallery. If you do not see this, all you gotta do is click on this little gallery button right here and it will pop up. And this is where we are going to be saving all of our LUTs eventually. And up here is our memories tab. If you don't have this, all you gotta do is click on this down arrow in a bracket and this will pop up and this will be useful for us a little bit later. I will show you why. This is our main viewfinder window where you can scrub through the individual clips down here on the timeline, which are representative of the timeline itself just in still image form. Over here is our node based system and this is where we're gonna do all of our additions and subtractions of the color grades. And down here in the lower half is where all of the color grades are going to be happening themselves. Now I will explain as we go along because this looks really complicated. I promise you it's not. What we're gonna do is come over here to our very first clip and what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna show you guys is a secret of mine and that is templatizing the way that I do color correction which is having the same nodes every time and having the same workflow and you can make it very easy for yourself by doing three very simple things. First thing, you're going to come up here to the first node that it automatically adds to your footage. You're going to right click on this, go to node label and call this H slash M slash L. Then we're going to hit Alt S on the keyboard to add a new node. Right click, change that to con sat. Then Alt S one more time, right click on that and call this color. And now basically what you're doing is you're setting yourself up a template to always color grade the same way every time. And what I recommend doing is coming over to your contrast and saturation tab then coming right down here to where it says contrast, moving this up to about, I don't know, 1.18 is always good for me and changing your saturation to around 72. And then once you've done that on your contrast and saturation, all I want you guys to do, click on HML, then right click on your image and go to grab still and then take this still and just stick it up here in your memories tab. And this is going to be your default go-to for anything else on the timeline and I will show you why. I'm gonna come over here to my second clip and look, all of my nodes are gone. That sucks, but what I can do is I can hit control one on my keyboard and it will add all of those nodes, including the contrast and saturation that we've already done. And this is going to keep a uniform contrast and saturation for everything on my timeline while simultaneously making the same nodes on every clip. So I can go through here now and just hit control one on everything and just set up all of those nodes for a later time. And that is a very nice template to have because now if we come over to our first clip, we're gonna start doing our adjustments. And the first one, HML stands for highs, mids, and lows. And this is where you're gonna do all of your exposure adjustments is on this node. If we travel right down here to this panel, you'll see a couple different things. Lift is going to be the equivalent of your shadows. Gamma is going to be your midtones. Gain is going to be your highlights. And offset is kind of an overall adjustment. And then you have a curves adjustment right here, just like you're used to seeing in Premiere or Photoshop or whatever, that you can make curved adjustments. Right underneath the color wheels, you'll see this horizontal kind of dashed vertical line thing going on. These are actually wheels that you can pull from side to side to adjust your shadows, midtones, and highlights overall in your frame. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring down my shadows in this first clip. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to pull this wheel down into the negative. And as you guys see, it is lowering my shadows down up top quite nicely. Then I can come down here and do the same thing with my highlights pull my highlights back just a little bit, and then my midtones I will boost up just slightly to get us to a nice place. If you're a person that likes to use scopes, you see that there are no scopes available to you right now until you right click on your image and go to show scopes, and that will give you a variety of scopes to go off of, and it will show you a bunch of different things that we're not gonna go into full detail today, but you can always change these to different things here, and you can kind of customize it how you want it. 
So on my highs, mids, and lows, you'll see that there are three dots up here at the top. Dots one and two are exactly the same, they just look a little bit different. So instead of circles, it is bars. But dot three and dot one look identical, but they are very, very different. Dot three over here is going to be your logarithmic adjustment for shadows, midtones, and highlights. And what that means is if I were to crank down my logarithmic shadows, you'll see that only the dark parts of the frame will start to get darker. Now, what's the difference? If I reset that and come back over to my overall adjustments, if I crank this down, it's gonna make everything darker, including the midtones and the highlights. But with the logarithmic adjustments, I'm only doing the shadows isolated or I'm only doing the midtones isolated and you can get some really cool fine adjustment details with these. We're not gonna get into logarithmic today. We are just doing an overall color grade using the general color parameters. And this is all looking pretty good for my highs, mids and lows. Now I can skip over contrast and saturation because we already set that in our template. And the last thing I will do is come right up here to the color and it's looking a little bit pink to me. So what I'll do is I'll come down to my midtones and I will take this little puck right in the center of the circle and I will slowly start to drag it up into the warmer areas, maybe a little bit of yellow green to kind of get rid of that pinkish hue that was happening in my grade. Now I'm really liking that the way this looks. And if you guys wanna see the before and after of where you started versus where you are now, all you gotta do is hit Shift D on the keyboard and it will bring you back. It will bypass all of the grades and you can kind of see your before and after. Now, if you wanted to turn off just an individual node, all you gotta do is click on that node and you're gonna hit Control D instead of Shift D and that will turn that node on and off. So you can see it's looking very blue and very pink, but with the color adjustment, everything is warmed up and looking quite nice. So Shift D, everything will go on and off. Control D will turn off individual nodes. So now I'm thinking that this looks really nice. What I'll do is right click and go to grab still and I will create a LUT based on everything I've done here because my next clip, look at that, it's shoes again. What I can do is I can preview that LUT just by hovering over it over here in my gallery and it looks really nice. So what I'll do is I'll just right click on this and go to apply grade and it will apply that same grade to my next clip and now we are cooking with gas. Moving on to the next clip, I can also preview that and see if it looks good. To me, that looks all right. So what I'll do is I'll right click, I will apply grade, but then I'm gonna come over here to my color and I'm gonna adjust it because it looks a little green overall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back over into the pinkish area just to even that out. And maybe I'll give myself a couple more little high mids and low adjustments. And this time I'll use the curves instead of the pucks. And now we're looking good. I'm gonna grab a still from that since I made an adjustment. Moving over to our next clip, I will preview that, or I will preview the first one. This is kind of more in line with what I'm looking for. I will apply the grade and I will adjust my curves as to not make it overexposed. There you go, grab a still just in case. Moving on to the next one. Let's check that, let's check this. I think I like this one better, apply the grade there. And we will again make some micro adjustments in the curves. And last but not least, we got this clip, which I wanna grade individually on my own, starting with high mids and lows. I will crank down the shadows. I will boost the midtones and the highlights just a little bit to make it look really pretty. I will come over here to my contrast and saturation, and I actually am going to change the saturation of this because I want it to be a little bit more saturated. So I will bump this up just like so. And now maybe we'll warm it up in just the midtones and the shadows a little bit just to give it that nice evening sunset feel. And ladies and gentlemen, we have just gone through and templatized our color grade. Everything is looking magnificent. And now the last thing for us to do is export this, and that's going to be the deliver tab right down here. So coming over to deliver, I'm going to choose to render my entire timeline. I'm going to name this file Clips Graded. I'm going to browse for the location on my computer where I want this to save. And now under Format, this is where you're gonna to wanna to pay attention. Under Format, we're gonna change this to QuickTime. Under the codec, we are going to set this to DNxHR, and we are going to use DNxHR444 12-bit. We're going to change the resolution to our native resolution that we imported at, which was UHD for me. We're going to leave the frame rate at 23,976. And very important, under advanced settings, what you're gonna to wanna to do is change your data levels from auto to full, which will guarantee that your footage won't look washed out. You have to change this to full, otherwise you're gonna be upset. Everything else should be totally fine. And now we can come right up here to file. Make sure that everything is looking good in here with the file name. And what we will do is we will add it to the render queue. It will put it in the render queue up here in the top right corner and we will just hit start render. 
And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have color graded your first little project in DaVinci Resolve. We will save and we will quit and we will navigate to where that file just saved. And that's it guys, congratulations. You have just color graded your first thing in DaVinci Resolve, whatever that thing is for you. I hope you were able to follow along and understand the steps that I take when I color grade in DaVinci. And just to recap, you guys are gonna want to templatize your workflow as much as humanly possible. So what we did was we created a high mid and low adjustment, a contrast and saturation adjustment, and an overall color adjustment. And we applied that same node pattern to every single one of our clips so that I know, or you know, at the end of your project that everything is going to have the exact same structure. So if you need to go in and you need to micro adjust the exposure or micro adjust the color on a clip, you'll know that you just go right to that color node and you can make your adjustments instead of having to dig through things that are unnamed or like really shoddily put together. But you, you understand the point. Templatizing your workflow is a big one. The other thing that we covered is bringing a ProRes clip right into DaVinci and using Auto Scene Cut Detect to automatically make edits on your timeline so that you can just take what you've made in Adobe Premiere and color grade in DaVinci Resolve and have little to no issues with like weird XML import things or having to import the clips and then re-edit it into, I still don't trust DaVinci yet as an editing platform, but for color grading, 150,000%. Then just making sure that your export settings are correct and then go ahead and export that bad boy, then you can bring it right back into Premiere. You can finish it up there and do a final export in Premiere if you have graphics or something that you wanna overlay over top of it. Now you have a color grade that you did in another program that you've just brought back into Premiere and you can finish it up there. Again, this is just a very basic color correction bootcamp inside of DaVinci Resolve. I will do more in-depth tutorials on mass tracking, on selective color management, on all the little nuances and micro details inside of DaVinci that we didn't cover Cover today and I will do those videos later in the future if you guys are interested in learning DaVinci Resolve. So if you are interested in learning DaVinci Resolve, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below. I read all my comments. I would love to hear from you guys on this topic. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. I really appreciate you watching this tutorial and hopefully you're a little less scared of DaVinci Resolve than you were previously. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff at Naughty and Sands. If you want to contact me on social media, drop me a line, say hello. I always like that kind of stuff. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.